welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another haul video for the month of August. And we're starting things off with some manga goodness as usual. Here we have the first volume of Tayo Matsumoto's number five. I recently made a first impressions video on the channel if you want to check it out. Really enjoy this series. Looking forward to reading the rest. Beastars Volume 13 from Paru Itagaki. I love this series so much. Wonderful art, great story and characters. Really looking forward to reading more chapters, uh, making my way towards the conclusion of Beastars. Next up, we've got Rent a Girlfriend Volume 7. I'm currently reading this series and I am working on a video which will hopefully come out soon on the channel. So stay tuned for that. This is one of my favorite rom-coms of recent memory. To Your Eternity Volume 14. This is probably one of my favorite ongoing manga right now. It's just a wonderful, uh, emotional, delightful series with great art. And I can't wait to talk about this at length on the channel. Well now, time for some not safe for work content on the channel. Yes, this is Volume 5 of Interspecies Reviewers wholesome and funny and is often mislabeled as this perverse thing when it's actually a comedy for adults if you will uh here we have some vinland saga goodness actually a triple threat we got book five six and seven with that glorious wonderful art from makoto yukimura i'm just in awe of this mangaka's pencils every time i open one of these books it, it just looks fantastic there's so much detail and goodness in here uh, so yeah, making my way through the series and hopefully I'll be catching up before the year ends because volume 12 comes out in a couple months as of this video. So we'll see. From one of my favorite writers, Naoki Urusawa, here is Asadora volume 3, continuing that series. Uh, it's so weird and awesome to have this. I think we're only two volumes away from catching up to the Japanese releases. That's wild. Next up, one of my favorite Shonen Jump series at the moment, it is of course Dr. Stone Volume 17. This got a little delayed, so it finally arrived. Looking forward to continuing uh, Dr. Stone. That time I got reincarnated as a slime Volume 16. I would love the show, but I had to step back because I am collecting the manga and it has been a treat to read this series and the art on it is just phenomenal. I cannot recommend it enough. Here we have Pokemon Adventures Volume 9 Collector's Edition. We're one book away from finishing the sets for now, though I do suspect at a later time we'll see uh, the revamp of the Collector's Edition line with, um, you know, Gen 4 and onwards. But nonetheless, here we have Volume 9, wonderful art, and I'm so happy to see my boy, my favorite Pokemon, Feraligator, on the cover and in the back as well. That is really, really awesome. It has been a while, but here we are with another Junji Ito book. This time it is the fairly recent release of Sensor. Not much to say because I haven't read it yet, but the construction and build of the book, they look fantastic. Super shiny and the dust jacket and everything just looks top-notch quality material. And to have his work collected in oversized format, in hardcover, you know, sort of a prestige editions, if you will, really exciting. So this one's a little bit out of the norm. It is One Week Friends. This anime DVD collection was sent from Right Stuff in their uh, birthday sale. I had that $25 free item code that they were giving out and I used it and this is what I got. One Week Friends. I'm interested in watching this, although I am dreading it because it seems and sounds like a tearjerker. And I'm not ready to get my feelings hurt. Something I've been meaning to collect for a while and I waited and this was part of the summer birthday sale from Ride Stuff. I got Q the third season at a deep discount, which was really cool. Finally, this is an achievement. A year and two months later, we finally have all of the original Inuyasha collected for the first time on Blu-ray. Six sets. This has been an amazing ride to collect. So many ups and downs in a year's worth uh, that I can't even begin to talk about in this video. But nonetheless, really satisfying to uh, have this on my shelf, a series that I loved growing up and watched the many reruns on Adult Swim. So yeah, nothing left to do but put it on the shelf right there. Let's move on to some live action goodness and of 
course, I had to continue with my ongoing or growing uh, kaiju collection. I've watched a lot of these movies, but I didn't own a single one, so now I'm trying to get as many as I can at reasonable prices, because I do know some are out of print, others are a little bit hard to find, but this wasn't the case with Rodan. Here we have the uh, Rodan motion picture, which looks surprisingly well on this DVD, and I am looking forward to uh, re-watching this bad boy and enjoying it, because I love me some giant flying turkey. The Queen of the Monsters is here, and a quadruple feature, if you will, because here we have Mothra, the original movie, with the uh, Steelbook release from, I want to say, two years ago or something like that. And, of course, Rebirth of Mothra 1, 2, and 3 from the Toho Godzilla Collection Sony Blu-rays. So that is awesome, and they look fantastic. I'm really surprised at how clean the original Mothra movie looks on Blu-ray. I got Blind Woman's Curse from Teruo Ishii, of course, starring the gorgeous Meiko Kaji. This movie is all kinds of crazy and awesome, and I can't wait to watch it in full. The restoration work on this thing is really, really awesome. Moving towards the Criterion side of things, I had to grab more classic samurai movies for my samurai shelf, and I went with Akira Kurosawa's classic Throne of Blood, and I picked up another classic movie, Mazaki Kobayashi's Harakiri, which I will admit this will be the first time I ever watch uh, Harakiri. Next up is one of the most anticipated Blu-ray releases of 2021, and it is, of course, the classic, the great Daimajin Trilogy. So excited to own this. This is a beautiful set. Mine had a little scuff, little ding, but that's all right. I'm, I'm not too picky about that stuff, uh, but it looks amazing. The attention to detail and care that went into the restoration and even this packaging and all that stuff. I'm really, really happy to own this set. And yeah, uh, watching all three uh, classic Daimajin movies. Next up is something that I've always wanted to own, and it is, of course, Nobuhiko Obayashi's house. It's something that's always been on my radar, and for some reason, I never get around to uh, grabbing it, but here I am, finally owning house and adding it to my growing uh, collection of Asian cinema. Really excited about that. And to round things off for the month of August, one video game, I went back and dusted off my old GameCube. Surprisingly, it works just fine, and I decided to pick up some games that I was missing for my collection of GameCube games. I'm not interested in a full set, nor any of the expensive ones of all those crazy uh, JRPGs and stuff. I'm just interested in a couple uh, classic famous ones, including Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. Really cool, really awesome. Hooked it up recently, played it, and had a lot of fun with it, and yeah. Really excited to uh, own this uh, wonderful game. All right, so that's about it. A wild and crazy haul for sure for the month of August, but look forward to the next one because it's September. It's going to be a huge one. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video. Oh, 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 oh,